This episode of This Printed Thing is sponsored by PCBWay. Did you know that even if you don't have a 3D printer, you can still get your stuff 3D printed by PCBWay? They can also do injection molding, CNC machining, and they can even help you design and fabricate boards for your electronics. Use PCBWay for all of your prototyping needs. Prototype the smart way with PCBWay. Hey there YouTube, welcome to another episode of This Printed Thing. My name is Mike and I get a lot of questions both online and offline about 3D printing. I'm always showing you guys tips and tricks on how to do some advanced things with 3D printing, but it recently occurred to me that I've never really covered the basics. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering some of the basics of 3D printing. Now this is not meant to be an all-inclusive list, because I could drone on and on and on for days about 3D printing, but this should be at least enough to get you started. So let's get started. The first thing anyone with a 3D printer should have is a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, also known as IPA. Most newer 3D printers use a heated print bed that's topped with a spring steel sheet with a PEI coating, held in place with magnets. This makes it so that a model printed in PLA will stick to the sheet while the sheet is hot, but once the print is done and the sheet cools, the sheet can be flexed slightly to release the print. However, as we touch the sheet with our hands, oil from our skin can transfer to the sheet, making it more difficult for extruded filament to stick to it. This can cause your prints to fail during the print job. Dust can also collect on the sheet if the printer has been sitting for a while without being used. Wiping the sheet with some IPA on a clean paper towel can help keep your sheet clean. An alternative is to use dish soap and water to clean your sheet. Just make sure that you rinse it and dry it well. The next thing that you'll likely need is a tube of Super Lube. The lead screws on your 3D printer that control the Z-axis, or the up and down motion, need to be cleaned and lubricated every so often. Some printers, like the Bamboo Lab printers, will let you know when it's time to do this, but if yours doesn't alert you to this, once a month should suffice. But you won't regret doing it more often than that if your printer is in constant use. You can even 3D print a tool that makes the cleaning easier. Just put a piece of paper towel in it, squeeze it onto the lead screw, and run the Z-axis up and down to clean it. You can also use this to apply new grease, but it might be easier to just get a little on your fingers and lubricate the lead screws that way. Just make sure you clean off any excess grease after you've run the Z-axis up and down a couple of times. Some printers, like the Prusas, will use smooth rods for the X and Y axis, or to move left and right, forward and backward. Consult your printer's manual, but these rods likely will also need to be cleaned and lubricated. But if your printer uses linear rails, rollers, or carbon rods for the X axis, don't lubricate them like this. They likely won't require any lubrication, just an occasional cleaning. But refer to your printer's manual for this. The third thing that any owner of a 3D printer should have is a no-clogger tool. With FDM 3D printers, it's not a matter of if you get a clog, it's a matter of when. It will happen. A lot of times when you buy a new 3D printer, it'll come with an acupuncture needle. The idea is that if you get a clog, you shove that needle up the nozzle to try and dislodge the clog. I have never seen that actually work well. A no-clogger tool is a thin metal rod with a very sharp tip. The tip is perfectly shaped like the inside of most nozzles. You heat the nozzle, shove the tool down through the hot end, and push out anything that is stuck in the nozzle. You can then clean off the tool with a razor blade by simply whittling off the stuck-on filament. Ever since the no-clogger tool came out, there have been a lot of knockoffs. They're pretty much all the same tool, so if you can't find the brand name tool, any of the others should do. The next thing that you should have if you own a 3D printer is a filament dryer. Most 3D printing filaments are hygroscopic, which means that they will absorb water from the air. 
The only way to get rid of said water from said filaments is to heat the filament to its glass transition temperature for several hours. A filament dryer does exactly this. It's like a food dehydrator for your filament. In fact, some people have made minor modifications to their old food dehydrators just for this purpose of drying their filaments. Some enclosed 3D printers, like those from Bamboo Lab, also have this function. With PLA, you can simply heat it to around 50 degrees Celsius. But if you plan on using filaments that print at higher temperatures, like PETG or PETG, you will need a filament dryer that can reach higher temperatures for drying. So if you're in the market for a filament dryer, be sure and check the specs so that you know you're getting one that can reach the temperatures that you need. These next few things are more just best practices for 3D printing, starting with making sure that your print bed is level. Especially anytime you remove the sheet from your print bed, you should make sure that you do a bed leveling before your next print job. Otherwise, you might have issues on the first few layers of your print. Most modern 3D printers sold within the last couple of years will have an automatic bed leveling feature where it'll use one of various techniques to probe the bed and make internal adjustments for any unevenness of the bed. Some printers, like the Prusas, will automatically do this before every job. Others, like the Bamboos, will give you the option of doing it before each job, but it's not mandatory. Personally, I allow my printers to do a bed leveling before every job. I've never regretted letting the printer take a couple of extra minutes longer on each print to make sure that the first few layers go down well. But if your printer doesn't do a bed leveling before it starts printing, you may have to trigger one between jobs. It's probably best to do a bed leveling anytime you remove the sheet from the print bed and replace it. Speaking of print beds, I recommend avoiding using anything metal to get prints off your bed. This can damage the surface of your sheet, especially if you're using a textured PEI coated sheet. As I mentioned before, after your print job finishes and the bed cools, you can usually remove the spring steel sheet, flex it a little bit, and your prints will release. If your print is small and only a few layers high, you can find something thin and plastic, not metal, that you can try to use to pry your print off the bed. You can buy solid plastic scrapers off of Amazon that usually work well. There are also scrapers that you can 3D print, however, these don't tend to hold up very well. This last tip is for anyone that wants to do a lot of multicolor printing. As you might know if you've been subscribed to my channel for more than a minute, I use bamboo printers for their ability to print in multiple colors. I've also used Prusa with the aid of a Palette 3 Pro to print multicolored models. Now, other manufacturers are getting into the multicolor scene, like Anycubic with their Cobra 3 and the accompanying Ace Pro. One downfall that almost all of them have to deal with when printing in multiple colors is the wasted filament between color changes. The nozzle has to purge any filament that is still inside it before it can print the next color. This causes waste of both the color that was being printed and the next color to print. And this happens on every layer that has multiple colors. You can minimize the waste to print ratio if you can justify printing multiples of your model on the same plate in the same print job. The number of color changes will be the same whether you print one of your model or 10. I hope this list of tips and tricks helps you. If you have questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I do try to engage with my audience and answer any questions that come in. And that's all the time we have for today. So until next time, remember, go out there, fire up those 3D printers, and make something awesome.